mention is, if you're not aware, hopefully by now you are, if you've made it to this welcome video, you know that FRC is no longer using Moodle. For those of you that have been with us before, um, you know that Moodle was our online site that we used to used for hybrid or uh, you know online courses, but we use Canvas now, um, and it's new. I've had very brief training this summer because it's just rolled out, um, and so bear with me as I learn it as well. But here's some information about it. Um, you can always get in touch with Professor Mick Presnell as well, who's the one that's sort of running the whole um, you know switch from Moodle to Canvas. But basically, so I've taken you here to this FRC online. Um, and many of you may have used this way to get in as well. But you're going to go here to this FRC Canvas website, this instructure here. Let's see. And what you'll see happen is, so this is my dashboard. You can see here my courses that I teach. And so we're going to click here on my world history. And yours won't be those colors. You can set them to whatever colors um, you want. And this is the home page for this online course that you're taking for me um, for world history. So. I just want to go over a few things so you're familiar with how I've set it up and what's expected. Basically, sort of go through what I would if you were in my class on the first day, which is what all of this stuff is here. Um, again, if we were in class together and not doing this online, this would be this all the important stuff to know would be all that stuff I go over on the first day of class. Um, so what I have here first is instructor's email. So this is what we call a page and you can click on it and it's going to give you, I've typed up information. I'm an extremely detailed instructor. I try to provide as much as possible. Sometimes I drive my students crazy because any thought that comes to me at 2 a.m. I'll, you know, send through a little announcement or whatever. And um, I just am always trying to really keep you guys, you know, informed, reminding you of due dates and, and so on and so on. But anyways. What I have here is instructor's email so that you always, I know you have access to it in other places, the syllabus and stuff, but you can always just click on that link there and you'll be able to get to me. Uh, I check my email frequently throughout a semester, so although you can get on me via the announcements, or I'm sorry, not the announcements, but um, the inbox here, the messages here, I check this all the time. So this is probably your best bet if you need to get in touch with me right away. Um, my biggest thing is I place a lot of importance on um, communicating with me. Communicating with me if you're struggling with the material, if you're struggling with, you know, finding time to get this course done, you know, I'm not necessarily going to change my ways for you, but if you're not communicating with me and then you come to me the day something's due and you say, well, I'm just struggling with my internet or, you know, my mom's not been well or whatever it is, trust me, I've heard everything. Um, I'm going to be a little less likely versus if you're communicating with me and saying, you know, this is what I have going on. I, I'm more willing to work with you. Um, I want my students to succeed. I hold you extremely accountable and have very high expectations, but I also realize that part of my job is making sure that, you know, whatever life is getting in the way for you, that we can, I can help accommodate that as much as possible without, you know, um, letting you take advantage of me as well. So anyways, that's what, um, and you can go through, let's get back to this home page here. You can go through all these pages, have, you know, little tidbits of information that I've given you um, for all of these things, on it, and you can go through and read them all on your own. Certainly not going to spend time doing that with you now, but um what I want to just go over a little in a little bit more detail is so of course the syllabus and the course outline like this is the meat and potatoes right here right everything you need to know as far as what's expected of you when you need to have certain readings done um, you can click on these now canvas does have a syllabus link here and you can click on that and you'll see my syllabus but if you want to download anything any green document anything in green is a document that can be downloaded um, so I want you to, you know, look at these um, extremely well because they're very important. Um, and then this is an assignment checklist because I do, um, I do have a, a lot of assignments that are due, but I do that because I feel like it's better to do a lot every couple weeks and test you on smaller bits of information than to do a midterm and a final. That just seems cruel to do in a world history class that covers 500 years. Um, I think it's cruel to do in any history class, but um, it's just a lot of information. So what we do, and we'll get to it in a minute, is end of unit assignments, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, be sure you're always checking announcements. I think you get a notification when I've given you an announcement. Um, 
But just in case, you know, like I said, those things that come to my head at 2 a.m. and I'm like, oh, I forgot, you know, and that probably isn't as common or I know it's not as common when I do it in a, in a world history class. Or I'm sorry, in an online class, but things we talk about in discussions um, that maybe I'll think, oh, you know, I should add that. I'll, I'll put into announcement or something. Um, when I'm doing an in-class course, of course, then I, there's only so much time I have to get things to students, and so that I tend to send out a lot of emails to my students reminding them of this detail or that. Anyways, moving on from announcements, just be sure you're checking them um, if they come through. PowerPoints are crucial. You must watch my power, actually, you'll be listening to my PowerPoints. Um, they're audio recorded. Um, every, I mean, you can't pass my class if you're not staying on top of your readings and staying on top of your PowerPoints um, because that's where all the information is, right? I mean, you're not going to get the information just from being in a discussion. That, that's not going to work. So you've got to listen to my PowerPoints, um, you know, and, and again, click on this here and you'll read all about um, my PowerPoints and, and how they go in order and this and that. Um, questions to consider is sort of like basically when anytime you see that, I'm not looking for you to answer those and turn them in. I'm looking for you to realize that that's what, that, those are the things I'm trying to get you to understand are the most important parts of each unit. So they're important to take a look at. End of unit assignments is basically my way of testing you at the end of each unit. And if we scroll down here, you'll see end of unit assignments for unit one, which are due, I believe, September 3rd. Now, there's an essay and an exam here. You don't have to do an essay and an exam. You choose one. That's why it's called an option. You can click on them. You can decide which one you want to do for each unit. We have nine units in this course. You'll do eight because you get an exemption. You get to pick your exemption. Um, some of you will choose more than one exemption, but I only uh, give you one where I don't, you know, take the points away. Uh, if you choose two, well, you're going to lose 50 points, but uh, I think you get that. So you get one exemption, so that means by the end of this semester, you should have completed eight end-of-unit assignments. That's like eight tests, but you have to remember, they're every couple weeks. It's much less information than if I made you study for a test and come in and take a midterm, and, you know, obviously you can't do that because we're not in class, but online if you had to do that. Um, this is much easier, trust me. It is more work, but it's less memorization. It's less stuff at one time. It's all broken up, and I give you everything you need. You know, right now when you're seeing this, when I recorded this welcome video, I hadn't uploaded all my lectures. By the time you're getting to this, um, hopefully I will have gotten all five, I believe there's five for this unit, uploaded. Um, but again, like I said, I'm still learning Canvas too. So, um, you know, you'll you'll listen to all the PowerPoints, you'll do your reading and your reading quiz, you'll participate in the discussion so that by the time you get to this, you have everything you need if you've been staying on top of the coursework for my class. Um, you know, it's not, I'm not just picking some random questions. Oftentimes they come from those questions to consider. So it's all very, you know, it's, it all ties together. Um, however, it is important to note, and this is where your checklist will come in handy up here, you only get to do so many essays, so many exams, and then in some units you'll have what's called the primary source analysis you can do. You only get to do so many of each of those. So it's important you take a look at some of that other stuff and realize, you know, make sure you know how many. And you can always get in touch with me and say, hey, how many essays have I done? I just want to make sure I don't do another one and then not get credit. So just staying on top of that um, is really important. Now, right here, this is important, very important. In fact, it's the first thing, don't even get to this until you've done this. The course agreement, which is a document that needs to be uh, downloaded, filled out, and then sent to me via email. And the reason I want an email and not turned in here on Canvas is because I want an email address for you. So send it from an email address that um, you use, that you check regularly. I know we do most of our communication here on Canvas, but that's that's this will be the one time that I'm asking you to turn something in via email. So you need to do this, and you need to participate in this. You cannot stay enrolled in my class if you have not completed these by next uh, Thursday, September 1st, because I am required to tell um, the admissions office and financial aid office who's not participating in this online course by September 2nd. And my thought is, if you can't, complete a course agreement and an introductory discussion in basically a two-week period, you can't complete this stuff. Trust me. So it's our way of kind of weeding out. Plus, financial aid doesn't want to give you money if you're not um, participating in class. It's quite simple. So um, get these two done. Get this bit here done, turned in, move on, and you can start unit one. 
Units are all locked. Um, obviously, the first unit unlocks August 22nd, which is the first day of school, um, but it will lock. It will lock September 3rd at 11.59 p.m. So if you don't have your work done by their due dates, and some things are due before that, so you need to always be aware of due dates here, right? September 1st for this reading quiz. Uh, assignments lock when I have them set. So when their due date is at 11.59 p.m. that night, they lock right? Because we're moving on. The rest of us are moving on. And unless you have communicated with me prior to why you couldn't get it done um, beforehand, then, um, you know, I see no reason why you can't. I give plenty of notice. Once a unit locks up, you can't access it again. So for example, unit one will lock September 3rd at 11.59 p.m. and then one minute later at midnight, your next unit will unlock. Um, some people are going to say, well, what if I get this one done? I want to move on. I get that. You know, I, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to unlock it because not everyone is you. And I don't want you, I don't want people going from one unit to the next before they've completed this unit. Every unit builds upon each other. It progresses and it's chronological and it's very important that everyone has completed and if we were in class together, I wouldn't hand you an assignment for a unit down the road when we hadn't, haven't even finished a unit we were working on. So I'm not going to do that online. If you finish a unit before it locks and you're wondering what you're supposed to do, start on your reading. That would be, because you know that, you'll know that information. That's back up here in your course outline. You'll know what's expected of you for reading. Um, so just get started on your reading is what I would say. And if you finish your reading, well then I guess just uh, have some downtime. And enjoy the momentary downtime that you have before you have to begin your next unit. Um, so that's just sort of my policy on units. They're locked um, until we start them and we do them together. Some of you will get them done in the beginning. Some of you will wait until the day before their everything is due, which isn't smart, but that's the, I've been doing this a long time and I know that's the way it goes. Um, so anyways, that's just, and you'll see, you know, I at the time of recording this, this is about how much I had done. Um, but like I said, I will progress and get everything up having only had my Canvas training at the start of this semester. Um, you know, uh, I'm working on it too. So while I have all of the information I need from having taught this class before, I am still working on getting it all up. But like I said, I will have it when you need it. Um, so anyways, my thing is accountability. Hold yourself accountable. I have high expectations um, of what I expect, you know, that you'll be doing. Um, I do assign a lot of work, but I'm here. Always, always communicate with me, whether it's about the material, you're not understanding something that was in the PowerPoints or the readings, the discussions, you know, know what's expected of you, what your due dates are. Um, if you're not sure, if you can't find it, which it's listed in a million different places, but if you can't find it, email me, get in touch with me, communicate with me. And I think if you do that and I am able to stay on top of this switch from Moodle to Canvas and get everything there for you when you need it, which I'm fairly confident I will be able to, I don't see why we can't have a great uh, semester. And I look forward to getting to know all of you as well as we can online. And um, yeah, I, I, I wish you all the best in this fall semester.